Hi everyone, this is Brittany Bond and welcome back to the podcast. Today we are going to talk about speaking your truth. So this is something a couple people asked me about on Instagram. This is something I talk to about with my friends all the time. And I feel like it's something that can be like we could I could say a lot about this because it has taken me a long time to figure out I guess like my vibration like a vibration that feels feels good for me and my body to share my truth and I think this might even this especially I know for everyone this is a thing but especially for women this is a thing about feeling comfortable to be your authentic self and speak your truth especially when you are going to say things that you know other people are probably not going to want to hear like you know you need to disagree with someone or you speaking your truth is a yes for you, but a no for someone else, you know? So the first thing that I feel needs to be said about this is to acknowledge the the people-pleasing programming that we all have, um, especially in the culture that I was raised in. I'm from California originally, and in California, it's like you either say something nice to, like you either have something nice to say and you're very... You're very loud about saying nice things to people. Or if you have something not nice to say, you just don't say it. Um, And it really helped me when I moved to New York City and lived there for a while because people do not give a fuck and they are just telling you straight to your face like how things are. Um, So I feel I was raised in this very like, it's very feminine energy in the way that our culture was in California, but I don't feel, I don't want to attach people pleasing to feminine energy because I don't think that those things go together. I feel that being fully in your feminine power is speaking your truth, especially when it's, you know, a big fuck yes for yourself and it doesn't matter if it's a no for someone else. But we need to acknowledge that the programming that we grew up in, so wherever you grew up in the world, you have some societal, family, religious programming of how you communicate and it's important to acknowledge this because if you don't acknowledge it on a conscious level you will be subconsciously running these programs Um, so for me I didn't realize a lot of this until I moved to a culture which was a lot more in your face and forward and direct and you know just speaking their truth but in a very like aggressive way Um, but it made me kind of wake up I was like oh okay, I can also speak my truth, you know, maybe I don't need to to be as aggressive as other people, but I can just say whatever I want because, you know, this is the culture that I'm in right now here in in New York City when I live there. Um, And then, like, through the years, I've figuring out, like, my, like, one, speaking up for what I need and desire and my wants, but also my boundaries. So these are two separate things I want to talk about in this podcast. The first one is... Um, is speaking up for when you need it to be, you need to say something in your truth and it's going to be a no for someone else. So in, like, I just look back on like some situations that I've been in and it's, it's, it's been really hard for me in the past to, um, you know, be very direct with people uh, when I'm saying a yes to myself, but it means a no for them. And I noticed that this is because growing up, it was it was really healing for me to like look at the way I was raised and realize, oh, this was my inner child protecting itself. And this is just the like a trauma response that I have from being raised in an environment where it wasn't a safe place for me to speak whatever I desired, my authentic truth. Um, because I wasn't raised in an environment where like my parents really like listened to me. Like if anything, my dad if I spoke like what I would love to have, he would use it as like a way to control me or manipulate me. And it would be this, it would be almost like I needed to hide my desires. Otherwise they would be taken away from me. And so I kind of compartmentalized the things that I cared about. And then on the flip side of that, if I did have a desire, it was like suddenly my desire was below everyone else's. So it wasn't like, okay, what Brittany wants has a valid place in this situation. It was like, no, no, no. If I wanted to speak what I wanted, it needed to be like helping everyone else. It needed to be in line with like what the group wanted. And this is very much growing up in the culture of my religion where it's like service to everyone else before yourself and kind of this martyr type of like 
you know, sacrificing yourself for the collective. So, you know, when my inner child had some desires and just wanted to, you know, go play or do something, it was like, oh, no, no, that wasn't okay. Like, even within my own psyche, I had a hard time rationalizing why it was okay for me just to purely want to do something just because it was fun for me and I wanted to play or it made me happy. And I noticed that when I wanted to speak my truth up like to other people about this, especially when it was like going to conflict with what they wanted, I would subconsciously like manipulate like situations where I'd be like, oh, well, we need to do this thing. Uh, I need to do it like this because of this and this. And I would just kind of like make up all this stuff when in reality it was just because it didn't feel good in my body to do that. Or, you know, I actually just wanted to go over here and do this other thing. But the group was wanting to do something else. So I was making things like really complicated for myself. And and it was because I just didn't have this inner self-worth at the time that my pure desires were okay to be shared with the world and to be honored just because... I didn't realize that like me existing just by my pure existence, I was worthy of having everything I wanted. And this has been like a really big, like, whoa, wake up call for me when I realized like, wow, just by me existing, like I deserve to have everything that I want and I deserve to have all of my dreams come true and all of my desires and like to follow my joy wherever I want and, and to be loud about that and like share that with the world. And as I started to speak up about this more and more, I realized that the vibration of me being in my authenticity and like sharing from a place of like passion and joy, it just opened up the world for me. Like people, when you share from a place of like joy and following your passion, like people are like, yeah, go get it. Like I support you. I want to support you in your dreams. And What I notice is that instead of meaning to hide it, compartmentalize it, or manipulate situations to get what I wanted, I could just openly share them with people and they wanted to support me. Like, especially when you have your soul tribe around and the people that really love you and want you to succeed in life, they're like, yeah, go get it. Like, how can we show up for you? How can we support you? We have your back. And I was like, wow it can just be this easy. Like I can just flirt with life and just like follow my joy wherever I want. And like, and things can just work out and it can just be like so simple. And so that was a big wake up call for me. And I'm sharing this with you because I think a lot of us have this programming and it's like this, it's really hard to uncover because in order to uncover it, you have to look at yourself and really ask yourself like, do I believe that I'm worthy of enjoying my life just for purely existing without doing anything without having to accomplish anything make all the money you know become famous or you know have a successful business it's like am I good enough right now in my body like am I good enough am I allowing myself to play to to enjoy pleasure to follow my joy just for being me that's a big one and And then like, are you allowing yourself to share this with the world? And this could be like your close friends, your family, those people that are your support network. Are you really speaking your dreams and your desires into the world? Because this is how you manifest. It's the first step of manifesting. The first step is like, well, the first step is allowing yourself to believe that it's true and that you deserve it. And the second step is putting it out in the world in some way, like vocalizing it through words. And then the third step is action, like following through, knowing that it is going to happen in some way. So there's all of that. And I feel like so many times we, um, we cover up things. Like I noticed in, also I'll give you an example. So this coming weekend, um, we got invited to, I got invited to facilitate in a a secret festival happening outside of Berlin uh, in a castle. And I'm organized, I'm facilitating like little mini play parties within one room called the Pleasure Loft. And this is just like a dream come true for me, like on so many levels, like, you know, festival that's very like Burning Man style in a castle, meeting amazing people from all over the world and being in my power, which is like hosting spaces around sexuality, sensuality and connection. 
simultaneously we had already signed up for another event this weekend and paid and like said we were going to go and committed and the person that was leading this other event I really respect her and resonate with who she is in the world and the work that she's doing and I really didn't want to disappoint her and there was this feeling like I could feel my inner child just like going into this kind of hiding mode of like I really want to go to this festival in the castle I want to go to this I want to go play and meet new friends and like build my tribe here in Berlin and at the same time I already committed to doing this other thing and I don't want to I don't want to disappoint her and I actually feel like this woman is going to be a friend of mine and like you know what if she doesn't want to be my friend anymore like it's it's very much like my inner child coming out it wasn't like the adult powerhouse Brittany it was like the little kid Brittany that was like "Mm, I don't know I don't know like am I allowed to speak up for what I what I desire and like allowed to speak my truth and this is what it's really amazing when you have supportive people in your life because I talked to Faraday my boyfriend And he was like, just be honest with her and let her know, you know, that you got invited to this other thing. This is like so in line with your vision of what you're building in the world. This is like lights you up. You're super excited about it. And like, is there a way that we can work it out where, you know, we move it to the next, like we move the money to the next uh, workshop that she's doing. And like basically uh, so that we are all honoring each other. And so I sent her a voice message and I was like, so real with her and just sharing the whole vision of what I'm building how this uh, festival in the castle lines up and also just and how just me being authentic like I really don't want to disappoint you and I'm sorry and and I have my own event space in Thailand I know how it is like when people cancel on me and like you know I I I did not mean to put you in the situation and like you know I really just want to honor the whole thing And she responded really well. She was like, I really honor you and I love that you're transparent and that, you know, and also if you want to put yourself out there in Berlin, I can help you. And like, I know people that I can connect you with. And also here's, here's how we can work out the situation. So it's also honoring my boundaries. And I was like, wow, it really can be this simple, you know? And it felt so good because she responded in a way that really honored what she needed out of the situation and I was able to speak my truth and Faraday and I were able to get what we needed out of the situation and it felt so vulnerable for me because I was like it was definitely like my inner child that was just like is it okay to like speak up for what I want and what I desire and like will it will it work out you know or will I be punished like I was when I was a kid and these are the opportunities that we have like every day we're giving opportunities to reprogram some of these things that we've been programmed when we were a kid that you know kind of fucked us up um but it's our choice if we're going to step into that and like step into our power and like really be our authentic selves in these situations and I just want to re reaffirm here that when you are in the vibration of your authenticity, the universe responds to that. Like people respond to that. Like there's so much energy and momentum going uh, through you and like, you know, having your back to help you go in the momentum of where you where you would you desire to go to like fulfill your dreams. So like that is the key in all of this. Whereas I feel like you know, working in in law for many years and working in like the business world as a business consultant. I have seen so much of people covering up situations, like making, reframing situations to make it look like this thing when it was actually this other thing. And, and just so much complication and like drama and BS that doesn't need to be there. And when you're in real, like, heart-to-heart connections with people which is what I choose to have in all my connections now it it has no place for any of that like bs and so if you if you really want to call in your soul tribe and like create this environment where your inner child can always be playful and be present and you can follow your joy you have to show up first in your authenticity especially when it's super vulnerable and when you need to be brave and speak up for something even if you feel like you're going to disappoint someone or hurt them and you just have to like be able to find the middle ground you know like with the situation with this woman like we originally asked to get a full refund and she was like that's not that doesn't feel good in my body but you can move your your ticket to the next one that we the next workshop that we host this fall and we were like we talked about it and we were like amazing yeah that feels good in our bodies let's do that so 
it's about finding the middle ground, but really putting yourself out there and like being vulnerable and being authentic. So I try and do that. I try, I don't try. I actually, I, I do my best to do that in every situation that I can like. And so this is the second part I want to talk about is like when I need to speak my boundaries. Um, so if there's a situation where someone has maybe crossed my boundaries or, you know, they're putting pressure on me to go against something that I would like to do. Then for me, the way that I look at everything is one, no one can take any power away from me unless I let them. So there's, there's no way that I can become a victim. Like I am fully in my power at all times because I'm fully aware and conscious of what's going on. And then two, I choose to believe that everyone is doing their best in the situation and they have the best of intentions. And the first thing you might be thinking when I say that is, well, what if they don't? And what I want to tell you is that the power of intention is so strong here that you can change situations to go in your favor just by having that intention. So what does that mean? So if you choose to believe that everyone is doing the best they can in any situation, then you act in this accord and you speak to them in that way. So it's like, if, for example, if I am talking to someone and they said something that hurt my feelings or they're asking me to do something that's not comfortable in my body, I visualize their higher selves and their higher selves always, you know, understands the whole situation, understands the best thing to do. And I just speak to their higher selves in my head. And I'm like, I know that you are trying to do this. Uh, you want this to work out in the best way possible. And then I speak to them out loud. I'm like, you know, I say to them, <laughs> so this is what I want to say. I say to them, like, I know that you want this to work out for the best for everyone and I know that you have the best of intentions in the situation and I honor you speaking your truth and this is what I need to do to honor what, what feels good in my body. And when you say that to someone, they have the opportunity then to rise to the occasion and actually be, be the better person that you're visualizing they are in your head because everyone wants people to think the best of them. Like no matter what they say out loud, like, of course, everyone wants us to think that they're a good person. And when you say this and you say it from a point of authenticity and not from a point of manipulation, like when you're like, you know, I really, I really honor you like doing the best you can. And I'm sure there's a reason why you're reacting this way. Um, but I need to honor my boundaries in this. And these are my boundaries. It really like snaps people out because when you, if you, if they're coming at you with anger or some sort of negative energy, and you respond like super grounded, super embodied, and also with love. Like, hey, I know that you must be going through something. And that's the only reason why you'd react this way. And I'm like, you know, I'm choosing to look for the best in this. And I know that you also want this to work out the best. It like, it's like you are showing them a vibration that they can now choose to connect with. Whereas if you respond with anger and you respond whatever energy, their negative energy that they're responding to, they only are going to keep needing you in that negative energy. And when people are responding negatively to me or like, you know, lashing out at me or something, I always imagine their inner child, their inner children crying. Like they're, I imagine them as a little kid and they're crying because the only time someone is being like sharing negative energy is because when they're hurting inside. And I know this very like viscerally, like I know this so well because I grew up with a father who was like this. Like my dad was very controlling, very abusive, but as a little kid, I don't know if this is a superpower that I have, but I could see his energy field and I could see like his inner child and it was hurting so bad. And he just wanted, he was basically crying out for help. And I remember a couple times when he was being really angry at me and he was just like, I'm asking you for help. And I just remember being like, you're the parent here. Like you're supposed to be better than this. And then he just didn't know what to say to me because I was like a little kid just being like, no, this is supposed to be better than what it was. You know, like I don't like I deserve to be treated better than how you're treating me. And when you say that to someone, especially when you're like five or something, they're just like, I don't know how to respond to this. 
So imagine how my childhood went. But it works really well in adulthood when you're speaking to adults because you're not a little kid anymore and you have full power and no one can take that power away from you. And so when you respond like super grounded and kind and you can even imagine them as like this inner kid who's crying and asking for help, you're showing them the way out of that pain. You're showing them how they can become the better person that maybe they don't know how to be just by you showing them love in being, I call it being the bigger person in the situation, like the one who is, you know, responding with love. And I really believe that people are doing the best that they can, but also you always have to speak your, your boundaries. And I feel like in today's world, that's very like productivity based and, you know, it's very in like it's masculine energy of like, we need to get things done. There's, there's this like programming that a lot of us have that when we need to say no to something, we have to rationalize it. We have to be like, no, I don't want to do that because I am doing this other thing or no, I don't want to do that because, you know, I have so many things I need to do and da, da, da. And it does like, we feel like we need to like have a logical response to speak our boundaries. And for me, the, like the easiest and the best response I have as always worked for me is I need to say no to this because it doesn't feel good in my body. And saying it so calmly and grounded in that way, there's not really anything anyone can respond to that's going to like take you away from that power. Because if they try and manipulate you and push you, then they are literally doing, they are doing something that goes against what feels good in your body. And if someone is trying to do that, they do not deserve to be in your life. I know I've said this before in podcasts, but I think it's really important to say, like, only surround yourself and allow people into your life that allow you to follow what feels good in your body and honor your body. Like, I always tell myself and Faraday and whoever is my close friends is like, it is a privilege for people to be in my energy. Like, I cherish my energy. I know what I'm worth. I love hanging out by myself. And if someone is going to be in my energy and I'm going to share my energy with them or do something with them or collaborate or make love or whatever, it's because they are responding to me with just as good of, as good of energy and are also honoring me and my energy and my body and, uh, and, and honoring what I'm worth. So when you allow yourself to first get that reflection from yourself and know what you're worth and know what your boundaries are and your desires... And then you hold that standard with everyone in your life and you will start get pulling into your life people who will reflect you that st- those standards of you honoring your body and your boundaries and, and also supporting you and going after your desires and allowing yourself to receive all the things that you, you deserve, you know? And I feel like we complicate this too much. It's like... And, and this is why I said at the beginning, like a lot of it is people pleasing. A lot of it is feeling like we are not worthy and we're looking for this external permission slip that we are good enough to exist. And that is fucked up. Like you need to give yourself this permission slip that you exist. You need to give yourself this approval that you are good enough and that you are loved. Like be good enough in your own body. Be a complete unit within yourself and allow everyone else to be a reflection of that because when you do that and you actually are good enough within yourself on your own no matter what's happening externally the ironic thing is the second you do that you will get all these reflections externally of the same thing so you can't look for it externally first and then hope that it gets reflected back you have to be on that vibration first and then everything will be attracted in of a similar vibration So I hope that this helps. And the main thing I want to say too is like, allow yourself to flirt with life. I love to say this because I feel like it's true. Like when you're just enjoying every single moment and you are really in the vibration of allowing yourself to receive pleasure and follow your desires, everything will flow for you. Like Faraday calls it following your excitement. I love to call it following your joy following your desire, following your pleasure, responding, like whatever lights you up, whatever brings you joy in your body, your mind, your soul, do that, do more of that. 
because that's what we need in the world. Because the more that all of us are doing this and being this of this vibration of joy and pleasure and excitement, then we are naturally being the puzzle piece that we need to be to fit into the bigger puzzle piece of building this new earth that we're all craving and that we can all feel this vibration that's being we're feeling called to. And I don't feel like like right now where I'm at in my life, like but when COVID happened, I thought, okay, I'm going to build a new earth like on Copanyang. It's going to be a physical eco village and we're all going to live together and grow our own food and raise our kids together. I still would love that. I still would love to live in a, in a village with my close people and raise my kids together um, and grow our own food and have my dog there and all of that. I love that idea. I love that vision. And also, I believe that the new earth is actually going to be built first through a vibration of all of us stepping into our power and all of us coming together while we're stepping into our power and following our joy and excitement. And then when you have a tribe of us, it doesn't matter where we are in the world, then it's the natural next thing is, okay, okay, where do we want to live? But like first you need to have this tribe first. And this is what I realized. Like this is why I'm in Berlin. This is why I'm not on Copenhagen right now. And I'm like choosing to be in the world. I'm putting myself out there to receive more and more of you who are of the similar vibration of people who are following their joy and their passion and just like lit up by life and speaking their truth and being in their authenticity and speaking their boundaries because the more of us that come together, the more we are powerful and the more things naturally shift around us to the vibration of this new earth that we're really calling in. And it's so beautiful. Okay, I hope this gives you some power and you are enjoying yourself and your day. And please let me know on DM on Instagram at Brittany Bond how it's going for you in speaking your truth and being your authenticity and following your desires. I love hearing the stories from all of you on your journeys. It lights me up. Okay, have a beautiful day.